After spending hours building OpenCV with CUDA support on a Jetson, some people get a surprise when the new version does not show up after importing CV2. We launch Python, import CV2, and then we print out the version. And it's the original version. On this episode, we are going to go over how to fix that. First, we will build OpenCV with CUDA support on a Jetson Nano. Then we will go over why this abomination happens. Finally, we will fix it. After that, we will celebrate with a demo showing CUDA goodness. Jetson community member Michael DeGans has written a script to build and install OpenCV with CUDA support on Jetson. Make sure to star his repository. On the M. DeGans account on GitHub, there is a repository named Nano Build OpenCV. Let's git clone the repository and switch over to that repository's directory. Let's open up JTOP and go over to the info pane. The OpenCV version is 4.1.1 without CUDA, and for our build, we need to know the CUDNN version, which is 8.2. Let's quit out of this. Let's edit the build script. We can see that the install directory will be slash user slash local. Scrolling down, we see the install dependencies. We use apt to install them. Let's scroll down a little more. Here are the build flags we are going to use to build OpenCV. We need to make a couple of changes. The CUDA architecture 8.7 is for the Jetson Orin. The Jetson Nano doesn't know what to do with that. Let's get rid of it. And JTOP told us that we need to use CUDNN version 8.2. So let's change that. Let's make sure we save the file. Then close up the editor. Here's the changes we made. Now we are ready to start our build. We are going to build version 4.8.0. Password. And we're off to the races. This build took about 7 hours and 10 minutes. 7 hours later. Password. We're getting ready to install everything. And then we're asked if we want to remove the temporary build files. I always say no. I always save the temp files in case I need them later. The build files are in the slash TMP directory. I'll just copy them over to the home directory for the time being. Note that the TMP directory means temporary. Your build files may disappear if you run out of drive space or if you reboot the machine. Let's see what we have here. Let's run JTOP. Let's switch over to the info pane. We see that OpenCV version 4.8.0 is installed with CUDA. Let's get out of this. OpenCV has a command line utility that we can use to check the version. Version 4.8.0. Let's fire up Python 3. We import OpenCV by importing CV2. Let's print out the OpenCV version. And it's 4.1.1. What? What the fuck? We are back where we started. We know that JTOP and the command line know about version 4.8. But Python does not. We use the which command to determine the location of the OpenCV version program. I'll get you, my pretty, and your little dog too. Not that kind of which. It's in slash user slash local slash bin. Let's switch over to slash user. We are in a system area. Let's use sudo password. Now we see that there are two versions. When we run the version in slash user slash bin, we get 4.1.1. If we run the version in local bin, we get 4.8.0. This is the same version we are running from the command line. Now you are asking, how does the command line know which version to run? The path environment variable is a list of directories that the shell automatically searches through to locate executable programs and scripts. Let's take a look at the path environment variable. Here are the directories and the order that they are searched. We can see that user local bin is searched before user bin. Therefore, we run the OpenCV version 4.8. Now, why doesn't Python do this? Let me tell you the story. Come and listen to a story about a man named Jed. No, not that story. Python has a similar mechanism for looking for modules, but is different than the path environment variable. Let's import the sys module and then print the path variable. Now we need to figure out where our new version of OpenCV is stored. We can get that from OpenCV underscore version with the minus V flag. You can see that we are installing it into slash user slash local. And here's the Python 3 install path. When we combine the two, we get this for its location. There are different ways to tell Python about this. 
One way is to set the Python path environment variable. Then the next time you start Python, that directory will be in your path list. Let's make it a little more permanent. We'll add it to the .bashrc file. We want to add the directory that holds the CV2 module. Let's make sure we save it. The moment of truth. Let's open up a new terminal. We fire up Python. Import CV2. Print the version. 4.8.0. I beat it at its own game. It's demo time. Let's install our demo. We need to install git large file system. That will help us download the models. On the OpenCV account on GitHub, there is a repository named OpenCV underscore zoo. Let's clone the repository and then switch over to that repository's directory. Then we grab the models. Then we switch over to the demo directory, which is model slash face detection yunet. For the demo, I made the camera window a little bit larger. I've modified demo.py a little bit. Let's take a look at some of our options here. We can use the default OpenCV implementation on CPU or CUDA plus a GPU or CUDA plus GPU, and that's in floating point 16 mode. Let's try it with the CPU first. Ha! You didn't expect that, did you? It's a face detection algorithm, and we can see that we get between 8 to 12 frames a second here, which is pretty good. Let's just run it on the CPU. Let's take a look at JTOP here. We can see that the GPU isn't being utilized very much. Let's try it out with OpenZV CUDA. Change this to one. There we go. You can see the frame rate about doubles up to 20 to 22, somewhere in there. You get a pretty good performance boost just by adding CUDA here. You can see that there's not a whole lot of GPU usage when I'm just sitting still. When there's movement in the frame, you can see that the GPU usage is quite dramatically increasing. That's kind of interesting. And then when I settle back down, GPU usage goes down. And let's try the floating point 16 version. Change that to two. Oh, that went into dog mode. That's three frames a second. And the GPU is just cranking on it. It can't believe it. <laughs> You can see that it's much happier running in lower precision. I hope this explanation helped you. Thanks for watching.